Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to our YouTube channel and to part two of the Flip Pallet Cut Your Loop video. You know, I think we forgot to mention, although we did in the comments and in the description that there was gonna be a part two to that video. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of glad that we left that out because there were a lot of questions uh, via the comments on YouTube, a lot of questions via email, which is where I will most likely see them. And then of course the telephone here at the shop has been ringing off the hook. And we appreciate that. We love it. Thanks for contacting us and reaching out. And we're always happy to help. But uh, <clears throat> we're gonna have a little bit more from Flip here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to start off with some context on that video. I wanted to address a few of the concerns and questions that folks had. And then after Flip completes his uh, leader formula, I'll come back and we'll hit the whiteboard and I'll draw this out and hopefully it'll make a lot more sense to you. So the context is that when we filmed this video, which was several years ago actually, Flip and I were in uh, Central Florida and he was talking about building leaders for those uh, educated snook and redfish that can be found in the Mosquito Lagoon and Mosquito River or, uh, and, and also fishing even in the St. John's River. Um, and in fact, he, I think he mentioned that you used to be able to catch a fish on a cigar and that was just not the case anymore. He's also fishing redfish and snook and other species in very shallow waters, which tends to make them quite a bit more spooky. So just to be clear, he was talking about a formula for building 12 to even 15 foot or longer leaders. Not really a trout fishing video at all, just to make that very clear. But at the end of this video, I'm gonna come back on the whiteboard and I'm gonna show you how you can use this simple, basically three part leader formula to build almost any contact fly fishing leader at almost any length you want, depending on what you're doing. But just to give some context, he was talking about fishing, a very spooky fish in very shallow water that have had a lot of pressure. So he's going up to 12 to 15 foot liters, which is not necessarily the norm of what we would do around here for bass. Certainly not what I'm gonna do off of a sinking line. This is a floating line leader for spooky pressured fish in shallow water. So a couple of uh, concerns and questions. Uh, that, oh, another thing too. A lot of folks chimed in and they asked to see this knot, this snell, uh, or as some folks called it, a smell knot. It, it is a snell with an N. We, we have done this video actually a few years back, if not longer than that. And right about now, you're gonna see a link to that video and you can watch me tie it in our old studio and hopefully that'll be the close-up that you need to see that knot better and and learn how to tie that knot so th there was quite a bit of concern of folks about getting rid of their loop okay and a lot of folks said well if if i get rid of the loop how am i going to change leaders well if you buy into this concept of a contact fly fishing leader again which i'm going to explain to you you don't ever change leaders. Why would I ever change a leader? The butt section is the butt section. And if I'm, I'm, if I'm making a tight loop cast all the way down to the fly, this butt section is never gonna change. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. Bass fishing, streamer fishing for trout, uh, red fishing, tarpon fishing, the butt section on a seven weight is what it is. So this is never gonna change. I may change my tippet, I may change out my midsections from time to time, but I'm never gonna change leaders. With this system, you don't buy leaders, you don't change leaders. So there's that reason. If you're, if you're a trout guy or you need this particular line to do three or four different things, you may in fact want a loop in there. And you can still do this. You can still snell this butt section on here. And if you do need for some reason to go loop to loop, well, you can just cut this and tie a perfection loop in there and then you can go loop to loop if you need. It still gets rid of that doubled up fly line at the front end, okay? And actually I have a, a video on that as well. It's called how to fix your broken loop if your loop should break. 
or in a lot of cases, you know, I always cut the loops off. And if I do want loop to loop, which I might in some cases, just tie that perfection loop. And that video is probably right about there. How to fix your broken loop, just tie that. And that way you get the energy as Flip described, you get the energy from the tip of the fly line into the butt section of the leader. And then if you need to loop on a store-bought leader, that, that's fine, nothing wrong with that. But I think you'll find with this method of building your own leaders, you're, you're not gonna change leaders ever. Um, another concern that folks had was um, that cutting off the loop is going to expose the core of the fly line. And although we did not get it on film, but Flip has explained this to us many times. Uh, we, we used to teach saltwater schools together, and he would always explain that this snell knot, when you cinch it down, it seals up the tip of that fly line. And trust me, I've been doing this for 20 plus years. Flip has been doing this for 40 or many more years than that, actually. Lefty uh, showed me this years and years ago, and there is no concern of that soaking up the fly line. Uh, first and foremost, this particular line, the Flip Palette High Viz line, has a mono core anyway, so it doesn't matter. If you are concerned, okay, I get it, that's fine. Get yourself some Loon UV Knot Sense, get yourself a UV light, and just coat, especially the back end of that knot, okay? Hit it for a few minutes. And in fact, uh, I don't mean to be self-promoting, but I have a video on that. And it's right about there. So if that's a concern, you can seal that up, no problem. But as Flip said, that Snell itself seals the tip of that fly line anyways. Um, I've been doing this for years. I have never had a problem. I've never had one of these lines go bad prematurely because of that. So um, just really not the case. So let's, let's go back to this contact leader. Now we're going to talk a lot more about this and uh, we're, we're going to be talking about this in the videos. And I do believe it or not, actually have a book uh, that is going to be, uh, it's going to be available before long. Um, and we're going to talk a lot in the book about contact versus non-contact and contact fly fishing. Contact fly fishing is when <clears throat> you make a tight loop cast and we want that loop to go all the way down the line. We want that loop to travel all the way down the leader and we make a straight cast. The leader lays out straight and then the rod is going to come down. In almost all cases, we also refer to this occasionally as down rod fishing. Okay, and, and then the rod comes down. Of course, you put the line under your index finger, and then you have contact with the fly. And virtually at all times, you have contact with the fly. Um, this is streamer fishing, whether it's for trout or for no matter what it is. It's virtually all saltwater fishing. It's virtually all bass fishing, bluegill fishing, pike fishing, musky fishing, uh, you name it. Everything you see us do on Lake Erie, it's all contact fly fishing. The rod comes down and it requires a certain type of leader. Now, and that's what we're talking about here today. Exclusively contact fly fishing. When Flip's throwing uh, a, a little shrimp fly at a redfish, okay, Believe me, that rod comes down and he's tight to the fly. He has contact with the fly. Non-contact fly fishing is basically going to be, uh, can be broken down into two categories, into two subcategories. You have nymphs and dries. It's essentially, non-contact fly fishing is essentially trout fishing. And with nymphs and dries, you don't necessarily want a perfectly straight cast, okay? You don't, in fact, the rod is usually going to come up in most cases and not go straight down. And in most cases, you don't want that leader to straighten out perfectly, okay? Uh, we have designed particular leaders for casting nymphs with split shot and indicators. And then of course we have specific leaders that we tie and design for dry fly fishing. So just to clarify that again, stay tuned. We're going to talk a lot more about this, but 
today, right here, what Flip is talking about, and then what I'm going to summarize after you listen to Flip for a few more minutes, is strictly a contact fly fishing leader. It may well work if you're fishing a streamer for trout off of a floating line, but this is by no means any kind of trout fishing leader if you're thinking about nymphs and dries. Strictly contact fly fishing, uh, down rod fishing here. So just some of the questions and concerns that folks had. So uh, let's go back to that picnic table along the St. John's River and listen to what Flip has to say and then come on back and I'll summarize here on the whiteboard. So the velocity of this thing unrolling toward the target when it hits the butt section of the leader, we want to conserve all that energy and carry that energy as far into the leader and through the leader and as close to the fly as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. We don't want to bleed it off early like we used to think that we needed to do. So when I build a leader like this for whether I'm fishing here in Sweetwater on the St. John's River or whether I'm fishing on Mosquito Lagoon for redfish with a six weight, which I do mm -hmm. a lot, yeah. even a five weight. Um, so now, because I can transfer the energy better this way, uh, and because uh, I'm using longer leaders, the fish are just, they're just hip now. Mm -hmm. They, you know, you used to be able to catch fish with a cigar. <laughs> Much different now. Yeah. So we used to, you know, a standard fly line leader used to be nine feet long. Uh -huh. That used to be like, that's the leader, nine feet. So we would take six feet of butt section, and that would be our five or six feet would be our butt section, no more. Now I'm six feet tall, so my wingspan is about six feet. So here's six feet of butt section. Here's half my wingspan, that's another three feet. So I have nine feet of butt section here. Wow. So instead of tapering down three or four times like we used to when we built the leader, mm -hmm. with, with the thought in mind that I wanna hold this energy in the leader as long as I can, as close to the fly as I can, I need mass in my leader. I mm -hmm. don't want to bleed it off too soon. Right. I want to keep this mass way longer than we used to think we needed to keep it. So this is uh, 30 pound. Which is 20 thousandths. Um, this one is 20 thousandths, you're right. Yep. So now uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find myself a piece of 16 which is 17 thousandths. So I'm gonna tie in using a blood knot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tie in a piece of 16. And this material that you're using here, this is the, the Cortland stuff, uh, and you would call this what? Medium stiffness? Medium stiffness. Medium stiffness, yeah, okay. medium stiffness. Um, so off of a six weight, we're going 20 thousandths, which in this Cortland is 30 pounds. What's important is not the stiffness. What's important is the mass and the flexibility of the line. You oh. want flexible weight. Okay. And you want there to be as much weight as long in the leader as long as possible. It's like when you shoot, the difference between shooting a heavy bullet and shooting a light bullet. The light bullet roars out of the barrel, but it loses energy and falls off. The heavier bullet goes slower, but it's more parabolic and it carries much further. Same thing with leader, it's just mass. So it's propelling the fly. So, okay, we got our, our 16 which is about, so I'm only gonna put a short piece of 16 because I do wanna start bleeding off somewhat, but I'm taking it much further than we used to take it before. Mm -hmm. So I'm using a short piece. This is probably uh, 10 or 11 inches is all, uh, close to a foot. Okay, obviously we had some issues with some airboats. 
and uh, we actually cut that video right about there and uh, quite frankly we forgot to get to the rest of it but I, I can tell you the rest of it it's really pretty easy so uh, first and foremost um, the Snell we all understand that now snelling your butt section on there <clears throat> and basically the leader formula that flip is describing okay you're gonna take your butt section and that butt section is not any particular kind of pound test or anything like that it it is the butt section is the butt section a seven weight fly line which i have right here which by the way you've heard us talk about this before but for floating lines if i'm six weight all the way up to 12 weight i'm using this high vis flip pallet line and so the tip that Flip showed us of marking it with a Sharpie is very helpful uh, because if I have a floating line six weight and up, it's a Flip Palette High Vis Bright Orange Fly Line. So therefore, marking that helps me. So I know this is a seven weight. So the butt section on this seven weight, to give us that bell curve that Flip showed us, to get the energy to flow from the tip of the fly line into the butt section of the leader, it is what it is. It never changes. It doesn't matter again whether I'm bass fishing, tarpon fishing, bluegill fishing, streamer fishing, red fishing. The butt section is what it is, friends. And it just so happens that Flip uh, works with Cortland and he was using this Cortland brand of leader, uh, leader mono, uh, monofilament leader building stuff, which we of course have here in the shop. And for, if I'm using th this stuff for a seven weight fly line, what I need for my butt section to build any contact fly fishing leader is the 23 thousandths. Okay, that just so happens to be 40 pound test in the Cortland brand. Now, if you're using, if you're using a different brand, I also use a lot of Maxima Clear. If you're using Maxima Clear, the diameter for Maxima Clear that works on my seven weight lines is 20 thousandths, okay? And that happens to be 25 pound test. The reason for the, the difference, and if I was to, I happen to build my butt section out of the Cortland stuff here. If I was to build it out of the Maxima, I would use 20 thousandths and you would see that same bell curve. And the reason why is that this is softer more supple the maxima clear is much stiffer okay if i was to use maxima ultra green which i think is not stiff enough it's even less uh, stiff than the Cortland. i may have to go up to 24 thousandths or even 25 thousandths off of a seven weight so remember that it has nothing to do with the pound test you can't say use 40 pound because you know uh, we don't know what 40 pound is um, it has to do, as Flip uh, described, it has to do with the combination of the stiffness and the diameter, which e equates mass. So in order to get this bell curve, again, with the Cortland, is 23 thousandths on the seven weight. Uh, I believe it's 25 thousandths for an eight weight. Uh, it was 20 thousandths for a six weight. Uh, and in fact, if you have any questions on that or have questions about matching up the proper stiffness and diameter for your particular fly line, certainly let us know. And we may also ha try to have a basic chart down there in the description below me. So, so this butt section never changes on a contact fly fishing leader. Again, if I was wanting to throw dry flies or nymphs, which I probably wouldn't with my seven weight, you might have to change leaders. But in this case, a contact leader, the butt section is never going to change. In fact, we have a, a new slogan around here at Mad River Outfitters that a good leader starts in the butt. So anyways, you know what your butt section is, okay? For a seven weight, it's 23 thousandths with the Cortland. On a seven weight with Maxima Clear, it's 20 thousandths. You know what that is. So you can make your butt section as long as you want. For bass fishing, I, I really, around here, I don't need uh, a 
10 or 12 or 15 foot leader. I can get by with a seven or eight foot leader. So I might go with a six foot butt section, okay? And then as Flip just showed you, that next section is probably only gonna be about 10 inches or so. A lot of times I might go to 12 inches on it, um, but it's not that big of a deal. It's just a transition to your tippet, okay? Now here's the cool part about this leader formula. It's three sections. You know what your tippet is, okay? Because that's dictated by, first and foremost, the size and weight of the fly that you're trying to cast. And then secondarily, it's gonna be dictated by the fish that you're fishing for, okay? So in most cases with a leader like this, my tippet is gonna be somewhere around, let's say that I'm building a leader for bass fishing here. My tippet is probably going to be 12 thousandths, okay? So now your midsection, just split that right down the middle. If your butt section is 23 thousandths, you know your tippet is going to be 12 thousandths. Just split it right down the middle and go with, say, 17 thousandths. And then all that is is just a transition to get the energy from that fat butt section to the tippet. A lot of folks chimed in on that last video, and, and we apologize for that. Um, they thought that Flip was advocating just a straight butt section right to the fly or a straight butt section right to the tippet. And going 23 thousandths to 12 thousandths is just going to be way too much of a hinge, so you need that transition piece in there. But it's still a very, very simple leader formula. And in fact, it's very sim similar to what we do for sink tip lines. Okay, most of our sinking tip or sinking lines are three section leaders, but again, they're almost never more than four or five foot long. So let's say, and then you can make your tip at whatever, you know, your tip it's usually gonna be about one to two foot with most of these larger type flies that you would be using, whether it's an articulated Kelly Gallup streamer or a big bass hair bug or a, a weighted uh, crab fly, whatever it is. One to two inches is really all you need uh, for your tippet. So you can build a leader <coughs> using this formula in any length that you want, okay? You wanna make it, so that's gonna be a six foot, seven foot, that would be an eight or a nine foot bass leader. If I wanted to make it a little bit shorter, I would just make that butt section five foot. And again, what Flip was saying is this allows you to carry that energy further out into the leader and then wham, it kicks it right over. It steps down real quick, gets to your tippet. Of course, you've got the proper tippet so you can turn over that fly and survive the fight of that particular fish. Or if you have to go really light on your tippet because they're super spooky fish, that's okay. This leader formula will kick it over. Okay. So you know what your butt section is. That is determined by the tip of your fly line. Okay, to be honest with you, this is why we always tell you on our website that you need to know the diameter of your butt section. You need to know that this is going to happen properly and you're not going to be wasting energy. Quite frankly, most package leaders that you find on the market today, the butt sections are way too big and you'll see that you're not gonna get even remotely a good bell curve, and that is, it's gonna affect your casting, okay? So it's a really, really, really simple formula, um, three sections, and it allows you, if you need to go up to 12 or 15 foot, you can, and having that much, much longer butt section allows that to happen in conjunction with today's modern fly lines, and today's modern fly rods. So um, hopefully that clears it up. And like I said, I'll make sure in the description that we've got um, some guidelines for say five weight to 10 weight rods. Of course, you're gonna have to play around with it. Not all fly lines are exactly the same either. I know my flip palette high vis fly line. I know what butt sections match up with the Cortland or the Maxima. Uh, if you have a more aggressive taper, you might have to go up in diameter a little bit. So. And as always, if you have any questions, friends, feel free to contact the shop. Uh, you can send us an email. Uh, you pick up the phone and give us a call. We're always here to help. That's what we do. But remember, a good leader 
starts in the bud. As always, thanks for watching, friends. Be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned. We are hoping to get back down to Florida and spend more time with Flip and learn even more from him. We always appreciate that. Hit that like button and uh, stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.